In this video, we're gonna be cutting our very own rear ND filters for the Sigma 14 to 24 F 2.8 lens. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into this. By the way, if this is our first time meeting, I'm Ray Valencia, I'm a DP in Florida, and I work in TV production full time. But I recently picked up this Sigma 14 to 24 f 2.8 lens. It's the DGDN art lens for Sony E-mount, but this also applies to the Leica version as well because they both come with this rear template here for cutting your own ND filters. Now I did pick up these Haida rear ND filters as well. So this is the Haida version, the rear ND filter, and this is our very own cut ND filter, much cheaper if you have access to ND rolls such as this. I work in TV production, so these are everywhere and easy to come by. I already have them in my gel kit. If you don't have access to rolls of ND like this, your best bet's probably just to go ahead and spend 110 bucks and grab these glass ND filters from Haida. I'll talk more about these Haida filters in another video where I can review them in depth. But for this particular video, we're gonna go ahead and get started on cutting these ND filters now. Okay, so here we have our different strength NDs. This is one stop, two stops, and three stop NDs. So the Haida kit actually starts at ND9 and starts at three stops, and then it goes to ND 1.2, 1.8, and 3.0, which is the 10 stop filter here. Put your ND down and put your template down and just very lightly trace over it. So what I notice is that once you, when you're cutting this out, basically you're cutting out a smaller template than what you need. So if you cut out right on the lines, it's gonna be a little bit too small. So I like to widen this side here by just a little bit just so i make sure it covers the entire back of the lens there and then if that's too long i could always go back and just cut this portion off and then cut your little tab off and the last thing you got to do is just wipe off this excess ink okay so you can see the little notch we cut there will go right into the little spot here between the two arrows and then the rest of it just lays down here and then you clip it over and there we go perfectly in there covers the entire back of the lens here all right so here is the nd9 that we cut and the Haida nd filter as you can see not nearly quite as nice but it does get the job done okay so now that we've got all of our nd filters cut now we can go out and start doing some tests with these filters. So let's go out now and start shooting. Okay, so now we can try these indie filters and see how well they work. So let's run a couple of tests now. So here we are in the camera. So our shutter speed is set at one over 1600 right now and our aperture is wide open. So we're able to be just wide open here with this shutter speed. So let's try it with, let's take a still here first and then we'll add the indie. Here I have my ND filters and I separated them out into individual pouches and labeled them. So let's go ahead and put this in. All right, we're good to go. Okay, so we're back here with our rear ND filter on. All right, so now we're all framed up and these are the same settings now. So now, with my aperture still wide open. Let's see, we can slow this down a lot. Okay, so that puts us here. Let's take an image. At first, when I got on the computer, I noticed this green color shift, but with a few adjustments, I was able to get the color looking normal again. At 200%, you can see that we lost a little bit of detail, but it's still a usable image. So we can swap out this ND3 for ND6. So just drop it in there. Okay, let's head back over. Okay, so here's the sun. 
And the Indy 6 really didn't make too much of a difference here. We'll slow down a little bit more. We were able to slow down our shutter a little bit more, but the color shift is consistent. Another quick swap. Next, we're gonna go stash our ND6 away, and now we can try the ND9. Let's go ahead and just drop the ND9 in. Without moving the camera again. So this is with the ND9, and now we can slow this shutter down even more. And there's 320, 250 pushing it. We're starting to lose some detail in the clouds there. So somewhere in here is probably safe. All right, so now let's compare the Hida filters to this because the Hida's lowest strength is the ND.9 and that's the strongest strength indie film that I have, these Lee filter indie films. So let's compare what that looks like now. All right, so let's swap out this indie here. These are super easy to do as well. You just drop it on there, just like that, and it's perfection. So now we have the Hida rear indie filter. This is where we were earlier. So let's take a photo here. At the same strength ND, the Lee gel filter has a greenish color cast, but with some color correcting, you can bring back a usable image. Although right out of the gate, you can see that the Hida has no visible color cast and a more natural looking result. Okay, now we're back with the ND3. This is the 10 stop filter. Now we're able to get, wow, 25 second. Let's go 20 seconds and let's see what happens here. With stopping down the lens all the way to an F22 and using a 10 stop ND filter, we were able to get a 20 second shutter speed during the middle of the day and see some motion blur in the clouds. Let's just go here and let's go to S-Log2. There we go. That's an ISO of 1600, 4K 24 frames a second, obeying the 180 degree shutter rule. And our lens is completely wide open. So all in all, if you have no other option, such as these Hida glass filters, cutting your own rear ND filters does actually work. It does get the job done, although it does come with a few caveats. Be sure to check out the next video where we review these Hida rear ND filters for the Sigma 14 to 24. If you gained any value from this video, hit the like button. Leave me a comment if you have any questions about anything. Consider subscribing for more filmmaking videos just like this one. Shoot for the stars and I will see you in the next video.